Now, quite a while ago, I did a video on German infantry tactics, and it contained the following passage. If such a firing position is not attainable, the LMG should be used during the assault and fired from the hip. Since the video was based to a large part on a US intelligence installation of a German field manual, some people, and myself included, were a bit suspicious. Because it was portrayed like a standard practice, and not something extraordinary. Luckily, meanwhile, I got my hands on some primary German sorcery prints, thanks to my Patreons. Namely, I got the Reibert, the de facto semi-official German Armed Forces manual series, even up to this day, and even more importantly, the Ausbildungsvorschrift für die Infanterie Heft 2A, die Schützenkompanie, from March 1941, or sometimes better known as Heeresdienstvorschrift 130-2A, Army Regulation 130-2A. So in other words, this will be as official as it gets. So let's take a look. Both the Reibert and the Harris Dienstvorschrift mention explicitly the use of the MG in hip firing position. But it gets far beyond that. The Army Regulation explicitly notes on how to prepare the MG-34 for this endeavor, including various depictions. Under point F, schießen während der Bewegung mit LMG, firing during movement with the light machine gun, it is described how to prepare the MG-34 for this process. First, the MG should be used with a drum magazine. Then the carrying strap was to be adapted so that the machine gun could be worn on the right side of the torso. Now, while Princess Leia might mock one for being a bit short for a stormtrooper, the Heeres Dienstvorschrift just tells you on how to deal with it. Kleine Schützen schlingen den Trageriemen um das Griffstück, um ihn zu verkürzen. Small riflemen sling the carrying strap around the grip stock in order to shorten it. Now with the right hand, the Schütze would hold the grip and use its right arm to press the MG against his body. With his left hand, he would take the bipod and lead the aim in this way. About firing, it is noted that Das Feuer ist auf kürzeste Entfernung zu öffnen. Vor dem Feuerbeginn greift der Schütze mit der rechten Hand über den Zuführerdeckel und entsichert. The fire is to be opened at the shortest distance. Before the beginning of the fire, the shooter reaches over the feeder cover with his right hand and releases the safety. There are more instructions. For instance, in case of a champed gun, the rifleman should only unjam the gun in a prone position after an attack. Well, I think this pretty much settles it, if hip firing an MG-34 was a possibility. Since the instructions also include specifics for short infantrymen, I would say it was at least a training standard and not something out of the ordinary. Of course, it could be that the manual and reality diverged heavily, yet the manual is an early to mid-war version from March 1941. So I would say we are pretty much on the safe side here. Additionally, there are photos out there of soldiers using the gun in this way in wartime. See the links in the description for this. Now you probably want to know if this was also the case for the famous MG42. Sadly, I haven't discovered any information on that yet. Although in several aspects the MG-34 and the MG-42 are similar, the latter had a higher rate of fire among other things, thus the recoil could make the hip firing far more difficult or even impossible. Additionally, at the point of the introduction of the MG-42, the Wehrmacht had already lost the majority of its best infantrymen, thus the standard practice might have changed at that point. Yet I will keep an eye out for some official information on the MG-42 in order to answer that question for you. As always, sources are in the description. If you want to know more about World War II firearms, you might want to check out the channel Bloke on the Range, who does some experimental myth busting, like how loud the M1 Garand ping really is. Or if you're more into the Stug life, check out my video on the German assault artillery. Anyway, thank you for watching and see you next time.